right now. Mirko, how are you? I am fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, great to talk to you as always. I really appreciate the time, Mirko. So let's start at the beginning. Um, how did this all materialize? When did Bellator reach out to you? Well, a uh, couple of weeks, you know, we get in touch. And even I know Mr. Scott Cooker for years, you know, and uh, I get this offer for uh, Bellator 200 in London. And and they offered uh, Roy Nelson. It was a unique opportunity, you know, for me. And I took that fight. So you liked the idea right away? They offered you this fight and you liked it? Yeah, I liked, I liked the, the idea, yeah. And, and, and so can you clear up for us? Are you still under contract with Ryzen as well? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm still, I'm still there. So how does this work? How how, yeah, how are you? This, uh, I signed. I signed just a single fight contract. Uh, oh. So I will be back in Rising in on in July 27 again. Okay, so it's just a one fight deal. Did you have to get permission from Ryzen to take this fight? Yeah, I talk. I talk with with uh, with Mr. Zakibara, and he has nothing against it. You know, for me to participate in Ryzen. Okay, so any any dreams of you being a part of this heavyweight tournament, uh, another fight with uh, Fedor Milinenko, uh, people shouldn't think of that. This is just a one-off fight for Bellator 200. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's it. I, I I didn't receive an invitation for the tournament because at that time I was under contract with Ryzen, and uh, one fight is one fight, but uh, the tournament is tournament, you know? Okay. Um, is this a fight that you wanted for quite some time, a rematch? You know, you fought him almost, as I said, seven years ago, October of 2011, um, and it didn't go your way. Is this something that you've been dreaming about for, for a while to get another crack at Roy Nelson? I can't say I was dreaming about it. You know, I'm not a kid anymore to dream, but, you know, <laughs> definitely Roy Nelson was on the top of, one, was on the top of my list. Uh, um, uh, together with Gonzaga when I returned to UFC in 2015, you know, and uh, but it never happened, you know, it never happened, and now I think it's a destiny, you know, that we, that we will meet again, you know, but this time I will be completely healthy, unlike the, our first fight, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe this is your first time fighting in London since your fight against Czech Congo, right? And you had two fights yeah. back to back in the UK. The Gonzaga fight that didn't go well, and then the the Congo fight was was this uh, like part of your thinking as well? Let me go there and try to exercise those demons and try to get a big victory here in the UK. No, no, I didn't think about it, you know. And uh, this will be a third luck. I have a yes. feeling, you know. Third time's the charm. Yeah. Um, let us address this thing that has come out since this fight has happened. And I have some strong feelings on this, but I want to I want to turn the table to you here for a second. Uh, once this news came out, a lot of people said, oh, how can Mirko Krokop fight because of the USADA thing, even though it happened in 2015 and it was a two-year suspension and you have fought since then. But for some reason, I think because it's Bellator, people are getting all up in arms about it. Is there anything that you want to say about some of the critics who say that maybe you shouldn't be fighting on this card? Why not? Why shouldn't I fight on this card? I was suspended. I was suspended for two years, area for two years for nothing, for two years, for a, for a negative, for a negative test result for two years. And so many fighters were positive, taking steroids, anabolic, all kind of things, and they get they get rid of uh, with suspension of six months or one year, and they got they, they they gave me two years for nothing. You know why? Because I was the first one. Right after, right after UFC signed with USADA, they were just waiting for one big name to launch their program. But they got the wrong person, you know. And but mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a story. I, I talked too many times about it, and I'm really sick of it, you know. I'm really sick of it. I support you said you say this work, but definitely they got the wrong man, you know. They got the wrong man. And and we've talked about it at length. Uh, the part that kind of bothers me a little bit is a. It's been more than two years. B, you have fought already, so why didn't people, you know, uh, criticize Ryzen about this? And C, Bellator doesn't have to listen to USADA. They could listen to the athletic commissions, but USADA is in a financial agreement, financial relationship with the UFC. That's their problem. That's the UFC's thing. Bellator doesn't have to adhere well, to those rules as well, so well, I don't understand why there's all this hysteria about it. Listen, Bellator uh, does not use USADA, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And why did USADA wait for two and a half half years to make this an issue, you know, instead of after my first first fight in Japan, you know. I think, you know, I think the, that's questionable about their intentions, you know, but, uh, 
but enough about it, you know. Okay. And, I'm just uh, one... for, for, for this particular fight, for this particular fight, Mohegan Commission is overseeing this event, you know. And uh, absolutely, I'm here and I will do what, whatever they ask me concerning testing, you know. And uh, Mr. Mike Mazuli, he's on the way to Zagreb. He, he will come personally to come and test me. Oh, wow. Okay. So he is the head of the ABC yeah. and uh, the Mohegan yeah. Commission. Mike Mazuli is coming True. to Zagreb to test you. Uh, are they try Is USADA trying to stop this fight from happening? Mm, no, as, as as I know, no. Okay. No, as I know. Okay. Um, now, Roy Nelson recently spoke to MMAJunkie.com and said that he thinks that you are back on the special supplements, better supplements than usual. And uh, if that is your Facebook page, these comments seem to have really bothered you, right? Well, no, you know, but. I, I hate that kind of trash talk, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what he thinks and what he says, you know. And I think he should be uh, worried about our fight, you know. But you, I you understand why he's worried, you know. And But he should leave the testing and everything everything else to the commission, you know. And uh, my, my advice to him is to be more concentrated, more concentrated about me in the cage, you know. But if, if, if trash talk makes him happy, why not, you know. I'm always here. To answer. <laughs> do, do, even, you feel I don't like it. I don't like it, and I never use it, you know. But uh, obviously, it is becoming more and more, more and more popular thing in MMA. You know, some trash talk to attract to attract more people to watch the fight, etc., etc. I know, even it, even I don't like it. Even it is not my style. But if it makes me happy, come on. But I know this kind of accusation bothers you in the past. Other people have said it. For him to say this before the fight, did this, did this like, in your opinion, did this cross the line? Did this really piss you off? No, well, I wasn't, I wasn't pissed off. But I had to, I had to answer because of, of people who are following my career. I had to answer because of my fans, you know. Mm -hmm. I, can't just keep, just, I can't just keep quiet, you know, just like that, you know. And accusing me for any kind of doping really has no sense. It's just like I was tested positive for 20 times, and now he is, concer he is concerned about something, you know. I was never tested positive. I was never using doping in my life, you know. What happened is that happened. I explained it many times, you know. I explained it many times. It shouldn't happen. The outcome of it, 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 should, it shouldn't be like that. But I was perfect victim, you know. I was perfect victim. Did you watch his last was, fight against was, Matt Mitrion? Go ahead. One, I was the first one, and but it doesn't matter, you know. And I'm really sick of, of talking about it. I, I I understand. Did you watch his last fight against Matt Mitrion? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. I what did you fight. think of his performance? Well, you know, Ron Nelson is always tough. You know, I think he has the toughest chin in the sport. Not the heavyweight division in the in the in, in the in MMA sport at all. Uh, he can he can swallow. Almost everything, you know, and uh, but uh, his performance wasn't like he used to used to fight before, you know. And but he's always tough. He's always dangerous, you know. He can always he always swings that wild wild uh, right over cross, you know. And he goes forward, you know. And he's heavy. He's tough. But first time, if I remember well, he was uh, he was one uh, two sixty five, you know. First time in his career, you know. And uh, even even even. Even it, it it wasn't such a such a huge difference, you know. At the end of the day, he was he he was able to take to take uh, to take Met, Met Mitrion down in every round, but Mitrion uh, won clear, clear, you know. And uh, he was he was better, you know, in striking, and he he made a bigger damage. And there is no doubt that it was unanimous decision, you know, for for uh, Mitrion. But but uh, Roy Nelson, he was nothing special, but he was solid, you know. But not like like before he used to be, you know. Mm -hmm. He got get some some more weight, etc. But uh, listen, for me, it's most important to be to be prepared well. I'm training hard. I already started preparation. Even I never I never stopped, you know. I, from the uh, from my last fight, I take uh, one week off, and I'm in the I'm in a training process all the time. I just like it, you know. I just like it. This it isn't happy, you know. Training makes me happy. Huh? Sorry yeah. for interrupting. Go ahead. No, 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 nothing. I just training makes me happy, and some people doesn't get it. You know, some people doesn't get it that I train uh, two times a day, uh, five days in a week. You know, and uh, that's my life. You know, that's my passion, and uh, it, it it has nothing to do with just with the fighting. You know, I I like that that kind of of of, of living. You know, 
it makes me happy. And I will keep the same way one day when I stop fighting, understand? Because I like I like that 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 training schedule in the morning. I like I like uh, wrestling, uh, kicking, punching in the evening, and uh, that is something that makes me happy. You know, at the end of, at the end of the day, day I dedicated my life to the fighting sport, and uh, that's my life. And that's why people can't some people can't understand or they play dumb. But most likely they can't understand, you know, uh, that that man in age of 43 looks so good, you know, and that's that's why they are accusing me for taking some, uh, as Noi Wrestler says, special special supplements or better supplements. The other we all know what, what he means by that, you know. But uh, the only supplement I'm taking is two hard and bloody trainings every day, you know. It's an unbelievable that's, story that's because what? oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. That's it. Uh, I was just going to say it's unbelievable because not that long ago you were talking about retirement. Now you're signed to two organizations. You're fighting on a huge card for Bellator. You're going to return to Ryzen. All of a sudden, you've never been busier. It's crazy. Well, it seems that it is my destiny, you know. But uh, I signed. I signed only for this fight for Bellator. Uh, only one fight contract, and uh, then I will return to, as I said, uh, in uh, Ryzen on July 20, uh, 29, and. Uh, I'm scheduled also to fight, as as you probably know, uh, December 31st with uh, with the champion of Ryzen Heavyweight Tournament. It will be a tough fight, you know, and I need to be in shape. I need to be in shape. I need, I need to be ready. Why did you sign with Bellator for this one fight? What, was it just the opportunity to fight on a marquee card? Like, at the end of the day, why did this interest you? Why did you take the fight? Because of Fred Nelson. Okay. Specifically because of him. If it was someone else, maybe yeah. not. Yeah, if they if they offer me somebody else, most likely I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't take it. Oh wow. Okay. Is it because of his was, style, or you just don't like him? I was interested to fight Nelson. You know. Why? Why? Because uh, he beat me. He beat me in 2011, and I entered that fight with broken biceps and broken ligament, and uh, I broke it on the last. Uh, Last training and last round and last minute of my preparation for Roy Nelson fight. It was Friday, eight days before the fight, and I throw some some crazy hook, and I hit. Uh, I was doing sparring with Pat Berry, and I hit him to the head, and he dropped on his ass, and and then I see, then I saw uh, the hole in my biceps, you know, and and terrible pain, and I went to the doctor. Biceps was broken, ligament. I went to to MR and. Uh, but anyway, I decided to fight. I don't want I don't want uh, to use this as some excuse because there is no excuses. I shouldn't fight, and it is my problem that I took the fight in that in, under that circumstances. Understand? And uh, but I just feel I just feel that the result would be different. If, at least I would have better chance, you know. And uh, this time I will come completely healthy. I will come completely healthy, and I'm sure I'm going to beat Ron Nelson. Have you ever been in pain like that in a fight before? I can't imagine how much that hurt. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. You know, you you, you don't feel physical pain. You know, but I was warned by doctor that uh, as soon as as I come in in the clinch or I start using that arm in wrestling, that I won't be able to feel that arm anymore. You know. So, but you know, I, I don't want to justify it, uh, too much. You know, I don't think it's fair. But I, 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 just, I just, I'm just trying to explain why I wanted this fight. You know, because I don't feel I was completely he uh, healthy, and I wasn't, and I just feel that it will be different, different this time. You know, especially uh, I... after Roy Nelson said that he beats uh, Nogueira, he beats Krokop, and now he wants chance to beat, to beat uh, a, a Fedor, so he will. So he will have all three pride legends on his on his list, and uh, I just want I just want to prove him that he's wrong. You know, you've That's never all. fought for Scott Coker before, right? Is that something that you wanted to do? Because I know you've talked with him in the past. Yeah, I I know, I know Scott Scott for years. He's a true professional, excellent guy. You know, and uh, it, it it it's a good thing for Bellator that he is a, that he is a. Uh, uh, man in charge. 
Yeah, you seem to have had a good relationship. In fact, I, I do remember that you were almost close to signing with him not that long ago, right? Before you went back to the UFC? Yeah, I talked. I talked with them. We were negotiating, but at the end of the day, I went to UFC because of the because they offered me they offered me uh, Gabriel Gonzaga to fight in Krakow, and that's right. why that's why I chose that's why I chose to fight in UFC because they offered me specific specific opponent. You know, the same thing happened now. Uh, have you been watching the UFC's um, excuse me Bellator's heavyweight tournament? And if so, what do you think of it? Other than the Roy Nelson fight. Well, I saw, I saw, uh, I saw, uh, I saw, uh, 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 what's the... Uh, a rampage and chill? Yeah. And uh, Sonnen, yeah. Sonnen won, and uh, now there is a uh, uh, Feather versus uh, Frank Mir, and we still have to see the Ryan Bader versus King Mo, right? Yeah. So you keep up with it. Yeah. You follow it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. But honestly, I don't know. An anything can happen. Fight is a fight. Anything can happen. Uh, I, I I believe that Fedor will will win uh, against against uh, Frank Mir. I believe. And uh, concerning King Mo and Ryan, they are both great fighters. You know, they're both. It's it's hard to predict. You know, and uh, let the better men win. You know, what else I can say? When 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 this news came out last week, everyone was thinking, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna get to see Fedor versus." Mirko Krokop, number two. And that's what everyone was talking about, even even more than uh, the Roy Nelson fight. Is that one of those rematches that you'd like to see happen at some point as well? Well, I made a deal only for this fight, you know. Sure. Yeah, I will. I will find. Uh, I take this fight uh, against Nelson, but and I will see how it goes from there, you know. But you never know in MMA, you know. You never know in MMA. But I just want to say that I have just a single fight contract, and uh, sure. I, I'm just concentrated on fight with Roy Nelson, and I just want to be in the best possible shape, and that's it, you know. And I understand that, but uh, since it seems like rematches are, are things that interest you, especially if you're, you know, trying to avenge a loss, is the Fedor one at the top of the list? Because it, it just seems like still in 2018, that's one that people still think about, still talk about, still dream about. One of the greatest fights ever. Yeah, but uh, honestly, honestly, Feather is far from his from from the shape of his prime, you know. And uh, the break he made almost three years, I think he paid he paid too big pri uh, too big price for it, you know. And uh, he has disaster against Maldonado, and then he he'll be knocked out, you know, in 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 the first minute of of the fight against uh, Mitrion, you know. So. It is not. It is not. I think it is not the feather we used to see and we we all used to admire, you know. And uh, I don't know. I, I I don't think it's realistic to fight feather, you know. I don't think it's realistic. Thing at the end of the day, I haven't talked about feather fight with with, with uh, no one, you know. With he's under contact with Bellator, but I didn't talk. I I don't think about it right now. Believe me. Okay. Um. And by, and by the way, before I let you go, what about your friend Stipe Miocic, his win over Francis and Ganu? What did you think of that performance? Yeah, it it, it was amazing performance uh, from Steeper. Amazing performance, you know. And uh, he shut them out to all to all people who were saying that that you know. But it is happening. It it, it is repeating from fight to fight. Every single challenger, uh, people think that he'll uh, he'll beat up Steeper, but Steeper is a extraordinary fighter, you know. And I, I believe he'll hold the title for a long time, you know. Are 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 actually, you going to train with? Go ahead, go ahead. Actually, actually, as long as he wants it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any plans to train with him in in the near future? So, yeah, you know, I don't. I can't go to the states, you know, just for training. You know, I have my I have my training team here. He has his training team there. It, it's far, you know, just just to go for a training, you know, and. Uh, if I if I would fight with uh, with uh, with a similar type of a fighter like Stipe, you know, most likely I would call him and uh, we we would set up some trainings, you know. But uh, Nelson is completely different type of a fighter, you know, and uh, I don't know who I'm going to fight in in in, in Japan in July, and I don't know who is going to be a, a rising uh, heavyweight Grand Prix champion, you know, who will be my definite opponent for uh, December 31st. Right. Um, and, and last thing for you, Mirko, has K1 still not paid you? I saw that you were wearing a shirt with the guy's face on it that, that owes you money. Have they still yeah, not paid you? Yeah, 
yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Mike came. He never paid, you know. He gave a hundred and hundreds of promises, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, he's a professional cheater, you know, and he's running away. No, he doesn't answer the phone calls, doesn't answer the messages, you know. Just like he thinks that people forget, people will forget it. It's not only about. It's not uh, not talking about only me, you know. There is there is a. Uh, Five, six more fighters from the from the from the Grand Prix. He never paid a single dollar, you know. And now he's just playing dumb. He's running away. He's organized. He organized uh, another tournament under K1 and the under K1 brand, you know, which he shouldn't be allowed to, because he never paid the debt. How how how, how you can organize? How how can you organize a new tournament without paying? Paying your debts from the from the past. I mean, it, it is it is disgusting. It is disgusting, you know, to 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 act like that. To the people who were f who fought for you, who were bleeding, because you promised and you said and you guaranteed that they will be paid. You know, at the end of the day, I don't count that money. I, I forget it already. You know, but I will never see that money like like others. But I will never forget, Mr. Mike Kim. You know, I will never oh. forget. I, ha I, I I I printed the new T-shirts. You know with new banners of, on it with his face too. So I will most likely wear it in my free time in London. You know, so people, I just want want people to be familiar, familiar with his face. You know, and uh, cheaters, cheaters and punks like him deserves it. You know, he deserves that everybody know who is he. You know, how much does he owe you? He owe me nine hundred thousand dollars. What? Are you kidding? That's horrible. No, I'm not. I mean, listen, listen. I will survive. I don't care. I don't count that money anymore. But he is a he is a punk. He is a punk who is playing dumb and who is giving some childish childish excuses for five years. And every every single time he said, "Please wait a little bit more. Please wait a little bit more." And then uh, and then when I uh, last year when I announced on my Facebook, and he called me few hours later. Before that, he didn't answer. He didn't answer my phone calls for a couple of months, and then he said, "Yo, please stop, please stop. I will pay. Please stop." And now, after New Year, he just doesn't want to answer the phone calls, you know. And he is playing dumb, you know. I think, you know, people like him, he would rather swallow. He would rather rather swallow the shame and all embarrassed things that can that can that my T-shirt, my mentioning his name can create. But he will keep the money in his pocket, you know. He cares. You know, people like him. It's all the same for him, you know. Money is money, and uh, he says he has iron iron face, you know. So, so, so he don't, I don't think he cares too much, you know. I don't think he cares too much, you know. But the, but to cheat people like that, you know, everybody fought that night, you know, and uh, some people get injured seriously, you know, and he never paid, and he plays dumb again. And uh, but I have new T-shirts. Don't worry, it is my passion now. It is <laughs> it is like it will be like it will it will be like my hobby, you know. To inform from time to time people not to forget Mr. Mike Kim, you know, and his lovely face, you know, and that, you know, that's me, that's me. I can't help myself, I, because, and he deserves, he deserves it, you know, he deserves it, you know. Wow, and this is from your Grand Prix, right? When you won the Grand Prix, he didn't pay you anything for it. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing. Wow, uh, he didn't pay it to me and to other participants too, you know. Wow, he and he's paid, the you know, he, he's the owner of K1. He is the owner of K1, and then he starts. Making uh, when he wanted to uh, make a new event, two years after, three years after that, and he make a few events, and then, then we jumped him, because he came in the country next next to Croatia, you know, and uh, we jumped him there in hotel, and he was scared to death. But I, we just came to, to to inform him that we won't let him make new events that will inform inform the public. We we will inform the athletic commission in in that state that he's a cheater and he can't make new events. And then he start crying, begging that he will pay everything. He will pay. Don't worry, he it will be paid. Please let me do a few more events. And now he's playing dump again. You know, I mean, it it is disgusting. You know, but but it it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. All right. Well, you're not going to get hung up on but that. So least, for you, the the least, money's gone. But at least. Yeah, at least I, I I have I can have pleasure to print to print uh, to print the T-shirts with Brenner and his name, you know, and uh, to remind people from time to time. That that's just it. It is just my hobby now, you know. It is just my hobby. <laughs> yeah. Mirko, great to catch up with you as always. Welcome back and and congratulations on on signing the deal with Bellator. I always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. 
and I'm very much looking forward to your return. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, the one and only Mirko Krokop, back in May.